whole new person, this is Anton, and today we're going to discuss some of the recent updates in regards to the biggest geomagnetic storm planet Earth has experienced in the last few decades. The storm that happened on the second week of May 2024, and that basically resulted in some of the largest solar flares ever observed, followed by extremely powerful coronal mass ejections that apparently caused the biggest aurora we've seen in hundreds of years. And so let's discuss some of these new discoveries and talk about the event that in the last video I compared to the Carrington event. And now we actually have a lot more information to make actual conclusions about its total power. And so on May 9th, 10th and 11th of 2024, planet Earth basically looked like this from outer space. This is seen by the Aurora satellite, and here you're seeing some of the regions where a lot of the Aurora were easily visible. Here's for example one of the images from South Carolina, showing us the beautiful purple glow produced by the ionization of atmospheric particles, with these colors usually only visible during super powerful storms. If you actually want to find out what these colors mean and how they form, check out the previous video in the description. Here is another beautiful shot visible from Melbourne. And so here, based on a lot of recent reports and a lot of analysis, and by comparing these aurora to reports in various databases, including one known as Aurasaurus, that contains the largest database of aurora reported by everyone on the planet, scientists confirmed that a lot of these aurora were not just the lowest latitude aurora ever seen, but were also potentially the brightest and the most vibrant in the last 500 years. And for those of us like myself that basically missed these aurora, just because I was in a location where they were not actually easily visible, it doesn't obviously make us feel very good. Yeah, maybe next time. But naturally, this was the result of one of the most potent geomagnetic storms of the last few decades. The storm that was the result of the coronal mass ejection, that's basically the highly charged particles coming from the sun, and not the solar flares, as often reported by various media. And those solar flares and coronal mass ejections are very often correlated, they don't always happen at the same time. So here's actually one of the most powerful flares detected in the last few years. But based on the recent calculations, researchers have now confirmed that this was indeed one of the most powerful geomagnetic storms in the last few decades. The only one that kind of comes close is the March 1989 storm that affected my home province of Quebec by basically disabling the entire electric grid for approximately 9 hours. This time though, a lot of energy companies were actually ready for this and were actively monitoring systems, taking major precautions in the process. And it actually worked. There were no major power failures anywhere on the planet. And that's despite the fact that the aurora were even visible in Hawaii. Just to once again highlight how extremely powerful this was. Strangely enough though, the actual reports of malfunctions came from some of the most unusual sources. For example, companies specializing in agricultural equipment, such as the famous John Deere. But here this was not the result of the equipment malfunction, it was actually the result of unusual disturbances in GPS. This is because of a new technique known as the precision agriculture that does rely on GPS and in this case a lot of planting had to be suspended because of the unusual glitches in the global positioning system. Similarly, a lot of aerial drones, some which do rely on GPS, basically fell out of the sky as well. Funnily enough, there were a lot of Reddit posts with people complaining that their drones fell into ocean while they were basically trying to take pictures of the aurora. Similarly, at least one satellite, GOES-16, used by the government to track lightning, but to also track space weather, ironically went down for a few hours as well. But surprisingly, nothing happened to Starlink satellites, even though one of the last storms resulted in a lot of them crashing back to planet Earth. And this is for very unusual reasons. During these storms, the planetary atmosphere expands just a little bit, and so some of the satellites in the lower Earth orbit experience a lot more drag and can thus re-enter the planet. But I think one of the most unexpected discoveries came from the depths of the ocean. And this was recently reported by Canadian researchers from University of Victoria. And so here the Ocean Networks Canada, that actually helps monitor changes in the ocean currents, relies on the Earth's magnetic field in order to orient these observatories underwater. And that's mostly used to basically check the data for accuracy or for potential mistakes. But during those three days, the data was all over the place. And at first the researchers were not actually sure what's happening. This kind of looked like an earthquake, except that it basically lasted for three days. And eventually they realized that this was indeed coming from the magnetic storm, and the effects were even observable at over two kilometers in depth. 
with certain locations experiencing dramatic shifts, with the compass needle going left and right, skewing by approximately 30 degrees. And so in essence, this incredible event even reached the ocean floor. But how powerful was it, and do we actually have any numbers to put on this, just so that we can compare it to the actual Carrington event? And the answer is yes. And for this, usually the scientists use what's known as Disturbance Storm Time Index, also known as DST. And DST basically measures space weather. But in essence, it measures the strength of an electric ring going around planet Earth that produces a current with this unusual current usually caused by solar protons and electrons. And so normally it has a kind of a constant value that's usually measured in nanotesla. And so, for example, the magnetic field of the planet can be anywhere between 22,000 and 67,000 nanotesla in intensity. But basically this graph kind of makes it a little bit more clear. Normally, the value is extremely close to zero unless there is some kind of a geomagnetic storm. And most of the ones we've seen in the last few years were basically moderate storms, like the ones you see right here. In comparison, the last major geomagnetic storm that happened in 2003, the one we refer to as the 2003 Halloween solar storm, had a maximum peak of approximately minus 383 nanotesla at first and minus 422 later on. So basically it was already way off this grid. But the one that happened in 1989, the one that affected Quebec, had a peak strength of minus 589. So basically even stronger and even more off this grid. There's also that famous 1921 storm that we've actually discussed previously in one of the videos in the description, whose intensity was estimated at maybe about minus 907. But this was based on a 2019 study and was not actually directly measured. And then we of course have the famous Carrington event. Now this is also an estimate, but it was most likely somewhere between minus 800 nanotesla at the minimum and minus 1700 at the maximum. And so much, much stronger than the ones we've had before and still basically the record holder. And it's a record holder because the one that just happened in 2024 has now been officially measured to be at minus 412. So just a little bit lower than this grid and just a little bit stronger than the 2003 storm, but not as powerful as 1989 storm. So maybe not the Carrington event, nevertheless still quite impressive and it's still quite surprising that pretty much nothing got majorly affected with no major damage reported anywhere. Although here we also have to mention the sunspot, because surprisingly it also survived for a very long time as well. As a matter of fact, in this case it already went around the sun three times and has basically faced our planet three separate times as well. Here's actually what it looked like approximately a month after on June 3rd. So much smaller, not as powerful and not producing as many flares or even as many coronal mass ejections, but still active and still producing stuff nevertheless. And so just the fact that it now made three rounds around the sun and during each passage it was still producing various flares and various coronal mass ejections definitely makes this sunspot a bit of a record holder. And this is by the way what it looked like when all of these storms just began. And it might actually survive a fourth trip, which we'll know about sometime in the next few weeks, simply because the sun takes approximately 27 days to spin once and so we might actually see it again in July. But by that point I don't actually think it's going to produce a lot of emissions. Nevertheless, we might see another sunspot in the next two years just because the solar activity is now reaching its absolute peak. And so by 2025, we might actually see more aurora and some of them might be in different locations where they were previously invisible. And one of the main reasons the sun is becoming so intense now is because of the magnetic field reversal that's going to be happening really soon. We've actually discussed one of the previous ones in a much older video somewhere right there, but that's what happens to the sun every once in a while. But there's actually one more important observation that was really surprising and I guess somewhat scary. And this one was not from planet Earth. These are the observations from Mars. And here different probes were able to observe the effects of these solar flares as they started to strike the surface of Mars, producing bizarre effects inside various sensors, but also producing aurora on Mars as well. For example, right here, you can actually see tiny specks in various images produced by powerful charged particles as they strike the camera on board NASA's Curiosity. You can see them a little bit better in this image, with all of this essentially being radiation. And here the amount of radiation received during this time was equivalent to approximately 30 chest x-rays, approximately 8100 micrograys. And so not a super dangerous dose, but definitely a reminder that we might need to have protection 
if we ever want to settle on the surface of Mars. I mean, getting these chest x-rays every day is probably not very healthy. Either way though, this was actually the largest surge ever detected by Curiosity during its entire mission. So it's actually never seen these powerful effects coming from anywhere. And meanwhile, the ultraviolet observations from the orbit of Mars revealed this. And what you see in purple, these are basically various aurora visible to NASA's MAVEN spacecraft. All of them produced as a result of this storm as well. And so I'm sure in the next few months, we're going to see a lot more studies about this, potentially discovering something else mysterious about this unusual storm that definitely provided us with enough data to study for years to come. But until those future studies, or until something else is discovered about this unusual May storm, that's pretty much all I wanted to mention. Check out some of the previous videos on this topic in the description below. Thank you for watching, subscribe, share this with someone who loves learning about space and sciences, come back tomorrow to learn something else, support this channel on Patreon by joining the channel membership, or by buying the wonderful person t-shirt you can find in the description. Stay wonderful, I'll see you tomorrow, and as always, bye-bye.